All right, disclaimer. This is a personal YouTube channel. Any views or opinions represented in this YouTube channel are personal and solely belong to me as the owner and do not represent those people, organizations, or institutions that I or may not be associated with in professional or personal capacity unless explicitly stated. Any views or opinions are not intended to malign any religion, ethnic group, club, organization, company, or any individual. So the next topic is for the participation, presentation, and review of your EAA study. Um, so of course, um, for the participation, presentation, and review, um, as we all know, the aim of the EAA process is to provide information about proposals, likely environmental impacts to the developer, um, public, of course, the public, and this is the decision maker so that a better decision may be made. So when we say decision makers, um, this is basically composed of the DNR EMD because they will be the one who will issue the environmental compliance certificate. That is why we have to consider social accessibility, social acceptability um, every time. So we have to, that is why, again, public scoping is very important on the first few stages of the AA study. Because it is important that the acceptance by the affected communities through an ag agreed upon process of informed and empowered participation as well as the responsibilities that go, with, that go with it. Because there is a possibility that as you establish your, um, as you establish or as you are starting with your construction and then the community will be or will not be agreeing to it um, and it will come to a point that they will apply for um, or they will have um, a complaint, then there is a possibility that your construction will be delayed. Though, you, though, you know, in, in, in a legal aspect or on some cases, um, if you have the ACC and um, you have evidences that you um, went through the correct process, the proper process in which you did your public scoping first before as part of the process, then, you know, you can, you can, um, you can, you know, rebut to that, that, you know, the community has been um, consulted already. But if the complaint of the community is strong enough, then there is a possibility that your construction will be delayed or your project might be delayed or worse, um, you know, um, it might not be able to push through. Um, however, as the developer and as the AA preparer, there are a lot of ways to mitigate that. You know, all you have to do again is to go to the community and ask as to what are their um, issues with the project and maybe try to haggle with them and try to compensate them in, in you know, in, in other activities and another part of activities for them to be compensated or at least for their issues to be resolved. And, and then, of course, um, the sum total of many agreements, many agreements made at key points um, from the start to the end of the project um, development and assessment. Actually, not only to the end of the project, but as the project um, is already established and, and um, already operational. So the necessary, the, there is always a necessity for public participation because it's always the public that will have or that will be experiencing the adverse impacts of a certain project or certain activity. That is why our AIA um, should provide information about the project and the EAA process. And again, the public should be, um, should be informed with this. Um, and then identity problems, needs, um, and the environmental resources um, that are important to the various sectors of the society. Also, um, public part there should always be a public participation into the um, other general ideas or, or for the public might have, uh, you might be able to generate ideas and alternatives for a certain, um, for a certain project or activity or 
for as a mitigating measures for a certain adverse impact. So again, public, there should always be a public participation of this. And of course, resolve conflict and build uh, a consensus um, decision as to this, uh, as to the public specific um, issues with the project. So it should not, of course, it, 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 it's actually quite hard to have um, or to resolve a conflict if it's only the, con- the public's context that will be considered. Of course, the developer and the EAA, um, the developer and the, 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 um, the EAA um, preparer um, should go or should resolve the conflict as a consensus. And not only um, the public's um, decision or the public's um, issue, or or I would say the public's resolution to that specific issue. Of course, it should be consensus for the developer, for the a uh, preparer to the and to the public um, themselves. So the EAS presentation um, should have context. Um, should have this context and organization. So the environmental impact statement document should be comprehensive. It should be very comprehensive. Um, It should explain why some impacts are not addressed. So you have to indicate there as to why um, this specific impacts were not um, addressed. So maybe, maybe based on your study or based on your assumptions on your case, um, the impacts are not adverse or the intensity, intensity of the impacts are not adverse. That's why you did not include that. Um, also, it should emphasize key points as to what are um, the key points of the project. Um, why are you doing the project? What are the impacts, the key impacts of the project? And what are your key mitigating measures for those impacts? Um, it should set the context of the issues. So, of course, um, the important part of the EAA, EIS document is, of course, um, the impacts and the issues, especially coming from the public. It should also contain the non-technical summary. So, the non-technical summary or the technical summary that um, that can be that the general public can comprehend. Of course, the EIA should be a unified document. And that is why even if, for example, in your case, um, you know, you are doing it individually and you have different tasks, of course, in, in the end or, or as you consolidate all, all the documents and as you consolidate all your work, um, you know, it should appear like, you know, it's a unified document. Um, the result of the other work of a certain um, group mate should coincide with the other result. Um, um, yeah. It should be a unified document. And um, it should be as brief as possible, though it's comprehensive, but it should be brief um, while uh, presenting the necessary information. If you are going to go back again to the previous um, discussions we had before, um, you, I, I think I presented as to the number of pages um, on a certain EIS, docu- uh, in a certain D- EIS document. So, for example, if it's uh, pragmatic, it's EPRM, if it's project description, there are only, you know, number of pages um, that are required for a certain EIS document. Of course, um, the clarity of communication. Um, You know, unreadable EIS is an environmental hazard. If if your environmental impact statement is quote-unquote unreadable, you know, it's an environmental hazard per se. And... And the EIS or the environmental impact st- statement should be well written. Um, you know, we have to proofread. We have to consider er- grammatical errors, clerical errors. Um, at the same time, you know, we have to minimum uh, the technical jargon. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we have to. Um, Sorry, I admitted you're one of your classmates. Um, so you have to uh, minimize uh, technical jargons. Um, these are the terms that are very that are you know not well used by the general public and are quite specific to our certain fields. Also, assumptions on which impacts are based should be clearly stated. As as um, since most of your data are based on assumptions, then you know we have to clearly state. Uh, as to where did we base that. 
And then, of course, EIS should be specific. Our environmental impact statement should be spe specific to our uh, project, to our certain project or activity that we are doing. Um, because it will be hard to present an EIS document, an environmental impact statement document. For example, we are, our project is on the EVSU College of Medicine building, and then we presented uh, uh, a building not for medicine, but for a uh, building for engineering building. So, you know, they might tend to have, you know, different um, requirements when it comes to the building design itself. So, you know, it should be specific. And then predicted impact should be quantified if possible. Um, well, on your case, you did not quantify it. It was based on assumption. But on, on a real EIA, EIS document, uh, this impact should be quantified. Of course, the EIS should be honest and unbiased as much as possible. Though, you know, it always actually me as a... Um, uh, well, um, how can I explain it? Um, well, I would say, um, mm, all right, so, um, for, for example, um, for example, um, so I published a, a few papers, um, though I did not do it with my other papers, but, um, I had an, uh, I had colleagues before um, that if, you know, if the results, for example, as we do our statistical analysis and the results are erratic on that specific parameter, then therefore we have to, we have to pull it out. We will not uh, be including that as part of the parameters because the results are erratic and it does not, you know, give any, um, any conclusive results because the results are erratic. So though that is, you might say that, you know, that's wrong because we took out some parameters from the data. Um, but technically that is not, you know, you are, that technically that is not wrong because you did not um, add data or you did not, um, you did not, I should say, um, you did not, um, how do you call this? Um, you did not change the data. I did not change the data per se, but I took the parameter, the certain data of a certain parameter because it has an erratic results. Um, and, and, and on that specific example, you know, it's not being honest. It's, it's, being, uh, it's still being honest and it is actually not being biased because, you know, you just took out um, the specific parameter of a certain data because it has an erratic results and it's not, the result is not conclusive. On the EAS uh, document, um, there might be cases that you, of course, you have to, you know, you have to prepare an EAS document that would, for example, um, this should be acceptable enough for the DNR EMB. Um, in which to that, as the EA preparer, since that is your, you know, major motive, that is your major agenda um, to be able to secure an ECC, then there might be a possibility that you might be dishonest with your data and you might be biased. So therefore, as much as possible, well, the DNR EMB um, EIA people are very expert to this, so they might be able to detect that, you know, if you are being dishonest or or biased. Um, but of course, at the same, but of course, as much as possible, or actually not as much as possible, but every time, um, with the EIA statement, we have to be honest and biased, because if we are going to look at it on a bigger scale, if you if your EIA document is not honest and it is biased let's think now as to what will be you know what will happen to the adverse impacts if you did not quantify it as it should be so for example the intensity of the adverse effect is so high like the risk is so high but you only put it like it's a medium risk so if we go now if this if the project is already established and the project is already operational and the uh, impact is actually very high. It's or it's actually considered as high risk. Um, and then you know, um, it would be bad for the people living in the area, or it would be bad for the for the ecosystem itself, or for the area itself, uh, because you were 
dishonest and you were biased uh, with the adverse impact. So, yeah, the EIS uh, document should be honest and unbiased. And then, of course, um, with your presentation, um, you know, you can have visual effects, but, you know, um, do not put too much visual effects. Um, um, you know, it might look like Star Wars or some sort. No, don't do that. But, you know, if you have photos that you can show or, I don't know, or, or Google Maps that you can show, though, though your study is, you know, based on assumptions, so it will be hard to show those, um, to show some visuals. But if you can, that would be good. All right. Um, let's go now to the last aspect of of um, of the EIS document per se, which is the environmental monitoring and audit. 